the whole system can do no better than the weakest link. So we ought to identify and concentrate our efforts here. We were looking for a place which should play as a proxy to the whole system output. Weakest link by definition is that link which is limiting the output of the system. So if we focus on improving the output at the weakest link, the system output goes up and vice versa. So we have identified the weakest link, which is the first step. And this is the first step in a five step focusing process that we will use here. Relative to the weakest link, which is nothing but a bottleneck, all other steps have sprint capacity or surplus capacity. By sprint capacity we mean that they are able to increase the output of the system in regular work hours. The weakest link doesn't have that luxury. The reason why it is called the weakest link also is we know that it has been loaded more than its available capacity. Now this doesn't mean that we are going to whip the people who are working slow and make them sweat it out. It simply means that the people with sprint capacity have longer ability to produce than the weakest link or in other ways longer burst of normal activity can catch up with any local delays at the sprint capacity resource. Having said that the sprint capacity has the ability to catch up, however any delay or blockage on the bottleneck is production loss for good. If we have any loss due to any reason at the weakest resource, it's a loss for the system. It cannot be made up. In fact, loss production means revenue that we don't make. This compounded by operating expense that continue to tick over by the hour, it is quite likely that it's damaging. So the weakest link is the rate limiting stem, a drum which beats out the production rate for the whole system. In other words, it's a proxy at which the whole system is going to work. That means the rate or the speed or the rhythm of the production system is decided by the weakest link. It's a drum. The drum which beats about the production rate. The whole system will then have to synchronize itself with the rate at which this drum beats. In order to raise awareness of delays, blockages and general productivity, at the weakest link, we must write a visible schedule for just this one critical place. If we have to synchronize everything to the drum, it is but natural that you should have worked in detail on what this drum can do or can't do. And in our ability to synchronize the whole production, we earlier developed a detailed schedule for all stages. But in this approach to, man to managing operations, we develop a detailed visible schedule for the drum. Many times this schedule is also called the drum because it actually tells the whole company what this resource is doing and at what speed. And everybody else just needs to synchronize itself. Now this becomes a visible schedule and only for that critical resource and is put in place. The discipline of writing and moreover executing such a consistent, visible and dare I say optimal schedule will both challenge and raise the output of the system. We can't lose even a second on this drum. And we know that on one side is the risk of losing production. But if we systematically plan and execute, we can actually increase the output of the system. And this output from the drum will then translate to be an output of the system. 
and since you are focusing all your resources at one place, the chances of you making an optimal output from the drum is very high. The effort to identify the constraint was the first step in the five step focusing process. Exploiting the constraint is the second step and one of the first steps in exploiting is writing a detailed schedule. And when we say detailed schedule, we mean very simply that you write down the sequence in which the operations will be done, the date on which they will be done and the time they will take to be done. However, writing a schedule is by no means the only exploitation tactic. There are many. We should also bring to bear upon the constraint all of our knowledge of quality management, setup reduction, preventive maintenance and other productivity tools here. In the first step when we have identified a place to focus, that means our drum, our leverage point, we can then use all our ability to make sure that we do not suffer any loss here. And that would mean the quality management aspects are put into place. If by somehow we are able to save on setup time or number of setups get reduced, we can have more output on the drum. The preventive maintenance could be much more robust and other productivity methods could be put into place. However, the second aspect of this is we do not actually require the data on all other stages of manufacturing. The data required for developing a schedule, that means the time or the data to be maintained on the preventive maintenance or analysis of the quality parameters or any other productive methods. Now, this makes the job simpler. All of such tools have to focus only on the drum. Now, this is where what we call the leverage point. Now, all the quality management tools, setup, reduction, setup time reduction tools, etc, etc, are available. This knowledge is rich. It is practical and available. And for just once, we can give it very real focus. By this, the output will go up. We had learned in the previous stages that focusing everywhere is actually not focusing. And since we know it is the weakest link which requires the maximum attention and any increase in output of the weakest link will be an increase in output of the system, we know where to apply all this rich knowledge that we have. And that is why we say that application of this knowledge on the drum will substantially increase the output. Consider a defective product for instance. If it has to be reworked or it has to be rejected and it has used the constraint time that is unsellable, it caused the system a loss of sale. You produce a reject at the drum or the item gets rejected after the drum, it's a loss to the whole system because that time used up by that resource cannot be made up anywhere. Such understanding quickly brings about a focus upon the cause of defects and quality also improves. Because you know where to focus. Now you know why you have rejected. After having made a detailed schedule or a plan to exploit the drum, what will be made, what will not be made, we need to tie the whole system to our drum. We do this by offsetting the drum schedule. Drum cannot work independently. Somehow the whole system needs to synchronize itself with the drum. And this is what we mean by tying the whole system together. So what we do is we take the schedule at the drum that we have made after a lot of hard work. We offset it. Offsetting means you take a bit of time off and put a gating schedule. We offset it to the gating operation at the beginning of the process, which is nothing but a gating schedule. And this offset is what we call as a time offset. And we also take the drum schedule 
and we offset it to the shipping operation at the end of the process. So drum schedule is offset to the gating operation that is the beginning as well as offset to the shipping operation which is the end of the process. Now the offset single drum schedule is the rope that ties our whole system together. All of the non constraints and their sprint capacities are now subordinated to the constraint. A rope ties the drum schedule to the gating schedule and another rope ties the drum schedule to the shipping schedule. Now we have taken the step to subordinate every action to the constraint. That means all the non constraints will only work at a speed and sequence as detailed out by the drum and they will do everything possible to make sure that the drum schedule is not violated. They will use all their capacities to make sure that the drum schedule is not violated. Identifying the constraint was the first step. Exploiting the constraint was the second step. Subordinating everything else by trying the ropes is the third step. So we identified the weakest link, exploited it by making a very good detailed schedule. Now by tying the rope, we are saying that we are subordinating everything else to this drum. Planners will recognize that we can schedule forward from the gate or we can schedule backward from shipping. Actually it doesn't matter. Forward scheduling, backward scheduling, it doesn't matter. What matters is a detailed schedule for the drum and offsetting it by a certain time period to get the gating scheduled. What does matter is that we now do it only with the behavior of the drum in mind. And that is quite the change. Forward scheduling, backward scheduling still is not the issue here. The main issue is do we have a detailed schedule for the drum? And this detailed schedule of the drum with job sequence, date and time decides the schedule for everything else. If we have to resequence, we have to resequence because of the drum's behavior, nothing else. It's not only simpler, it is very effective. We now have extremely good control over the whole process and we are now able to reduce the work in process and therefore our manufacturing lead time. We are not reviewing very often. We have just forgotten the one, two, three, four, four first stages of manufacturing and we are only focusing on the drum. Plan versus actuals, WIPs, loading, unloading, all that is no more my concern. Every stage now just has to make sure that it is working at the schedule of the drum which is visibly available to everybody. We have shrunk the lead time of manufacturing. How this lead time will go down because now the WIP has gone down and in another simulation I have shown that why we say that lead time will go down when the WIP goes down. How do we use this time? that is given to us. If the market is expanding, we can use our newfound drum capacity to pump excess WIP in the market while holding the gate operations constant at whatever level they were perfect. Or if the market is static or contracting, okay, we can hold the drum at the market rate and lower the rate at the gating operation. That means we, sell, we send less material into the pipeline because now the drum is coordinated with the sale. Whatever market wants, I am producing and whatever drum wants is what I allow in the pipeline. This improves the delivery in full on time and drives the work in process down. How far down does it go? at least half. 
Personal experience shows that halving the existing work in process within two to three months is quite achievable, even in very large order operations. By halving the WIP, we also mean that practically halving the lead time. Of course, that is just the beginning of the continuous process of ongoing improvement. Halving does not mean that we have to rest in peace. You can always further reduce this WIP. And by reducing WIP, we mean that you can further reduce the lead time to manufacture. We can further increase the output for sure and also further reduce the work in process and thus lead time. It just means that lead time is tied to work in process and tied to the output. Reduced lead time becomes a very competitive advantage from which we can sell additional output. Maybe get more margins too. But it also has a direct impact on stock levels in the system. And especially for companies which are feeding to distribution or supply chain networks, reduction in lead time gives an unfair advantage to them. Responsiveness is the name of the game in supply chain. And if you're made to stock, how quickly you are able to react to reducing stock levels is how much you want to make your sales. Now, one way to further increase production from a weakest link, once all our exploitation tactics seem exhausted, is to bring additional capacity. I have brought in the fourth person, and that now seems to have increased my capacity substantially. Now, doing this will create a new system. Okay, This elevates our total productivity. Identifying the constraint was the first, exploiting the constraint was the second step, subordinating was the third step, elevation is the fourth step. Now, and that leaves only one more step, step five. That means go back, check that the system constraint has moved elsewhere. However, what most companies land up doing is they start at the step four. That is elevation. Now, this seems to most as a logical step, but it is usually not. If you systematically follow the first three steps, a substantial capacity could anyway be released. Now, let's leave this discussion of elevation for some another day and let's move further. Believe me, there is more than enough capacity to be obtained prior to this from proper exploitation and proper subordination alone. So let's leave it out. We need to continue our story at step 3, subordination. Let's do that. Buffering and buffer management is a critical part of subordination process that allows us to fully exploit the schedule on the drum. That means that though we have a schedule available, there is Murphy everywhere, uncertainty can strike. So we have to somehow develop a safety mechanism which can absorb this uncertainty and make sure that the drum is never starved of something to work on. As we know, an hour lost at the drum is an hour lost for the whole system. So if our drum has to be protected, we need to have a method of protecting or buffering and using this method is called buffer management. All of the work in process between gating and the drum constitutes 